All right, thanks, Wallace. And I want to start with Bernard from uh, Paynet Group. He's with us now. You, you know him as the people behind Pesa Point. What is the footprint for Pesa Point like right now around the country? Oh, it's, it's grown tremendously. You know, we started with our 110 ATM locations as visible orange and blue and white uh, boxes I think you saw everywhere. Right. Um, and, and we've really wanted to, to focus on growing that out. So your question is, what's the footprint today? Today, through a, a couple of initiatives, one is that Pesa Point is now appearing as a acquiring logo on other bank ATMs. That right. means you can go to it if you're a Pesa Point uh, member go to that bank ATM and use it just as if it was a PESA point. And, and if you count those together, we're at about 650 ATM locations across the country. So that's substantial growth. Right. The other part of our footprint is, is our point of sale network. Uh, and our point of sale network now numbers about 1,300. And this is really designed to go to places, if you like, that um, ATMs can't reach viably. So, so yeah, it, it's grown quite significantly in the last while. Do you see yourself still as a payment solution provider or are you sort of changing your DNA into something much more complex? No, I think that's still, it's still accurate to say we're a payment provider. Um, you know, what, what I think we see ourselves is, is initially we started off um, with ATMs uh, and everybody thought PESA point ATM card. Yes. And, and I think that's changed a lot because with the advent of mobile phones and mobile money, you know, the M-Pesas and Airtel money solutions in the yes. marketplace, um, we've, we've innovated so that our ATMs are now a, a stopping point for anybody. Whether you've got a card or a mobile phone, you can still come to our ATMs and, and, and get service. So, um, yeah, I think the definition broadens out a little bit, but no, I think we're still pretty straightforward as a payment uh, service provider. Yeah. All right, but you're, you're bringing in some new innovations in that space that were perhaps not seen before. What are some of these? Well, you know, I think, uh, as I said, the, the cardless transactions, uh, that was a world first. Yes. And uh, I think, you know, just the, the whole uh, region can be proud of, of what mobile's doing here uh, because we are really the center of the world with, with respect to that. And, and these sorts of innovations have been very exciting to see grow. Um, but I think also the, uh, beyond that, you know, we've got... Um, uh, I initiatives like our cardless, um, uh, sorry, our carded uh, uh, prepaid solutions, where we can go to uh, workers and people who have not had bank accounts before, yes. and work with their employers uh, to provide them with a very, with actually a zero cost financial service. Um, yes. And isn't that unheard of these days? That is impressive. Yeah. But why is it important? As uh, the, the core of what you do is allowing banks to share ATMs. Why is this important? Well, I think the, the whole thing is, is, is really revolves around this word called financial inclusion. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's far cleverer people than I have proven mm -hmm. what uh, financial inclusion does for an economy. Yes. And, and the more people we bring into the formal sector, the more people we bring into the formal money flow, the better it is for everybody. Uh, and, and so very much so the last few years in, in, in East Africa and Kenya in particular, right. uh, the emphasis has been on trying to push financial services out. Uh, and, and, you know, they definitely are showing uh, benefit. And, and I think we can be proud of the way we've innovated uh, along the way. So, you know, we're using ATM slightly differently to the way the rest of the world does. Right. We're using point of sale different to the rest of the world uh, does. And I think the integration points with banks, mobile, um, cards, you know, it's, it's quite fascinating at the moment. And we've seen even branding from Pesa Point on CFC Stanbeck and That's the right. KCB yeah. ATMs. Is that part of the scale? That is very much part of it. You know, I, I, I really have a vision, I suppose, that um, is, is not uh, too far off where yes. w a consumer walks past an ATM and doesn't ask, can I use that? He knows he can use it. Any, he, but any, any ATM. Any ATM. And right. he doesn't ask what fee am I going to be charged. He yes. knows what f fees he's going to be charged. And I think mm. that's really the opportunity. But on the flip side of that, what does that really do? Um, I think that uh, by bringing in um, volumes, by bringing in more people into the sector, it's like any infrastructure. The more you push over it, the lower you can drop costs. And so we can also dramatically impact the cost of financial services. Right. Um, and you talked about cost, which is important. I am Neshinsky on Twitter wonders. We love Pesa Point services, but are there any plans to lower the charges because they're awfully high, they say? Yeah, and, and I think um, you know, that reflects the cost of, of moving money around the country. I think we've seen in the last couple of years significant costs of, of cash in transit, so yes. relating to security issues, etc. So that, that does reflect that. Um, 
Yeah, the, the solution is volume. Uh, the solution is the higher volume that we carry, the more that we put through our infrastructure, the lower we can uh, make our costs. Yes. I, will, I will point out, of course, at the end of the day, it's the financial services institutions that set the cost. So we're just a component. You right. know, but, but in the case of Pesa Point, I presume we're we, you know, a large part of the, of the component. So our vision is very much to drive towards lower cost uh, transactions, and that's by the sharing um, makes sense uh, because it, what it does is it allows more volume to, to go over a more efficient infrastructure and that's good for everyone. All right, because what, what that is related to the cost of transporting money from one place to the other. Mm. Ron Weezer, what are you doing to, to decouple the cases of uh, theft, in the, especially in cash and transit, because that affects everybody in the industry? Of course it does. And, you know, that's unfortunately for us, that's beyond our control, yes. um, you know, the, the cash and transit. But I guess, um, you know, what I can say is that if we look at the, the, the cost of that as a whole to our business at the moment, um, I, it certainly things have improved a lot. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, fraud is another area that um, we all have to sort of work into the overall cost of the business, and I think we're seeing improvements there as well. You know, technology continues to advance, and it does help. Yes. Uh, and I think ultimately, um, you know, the the direction is, you know, and this sounds a strange thing coming from Pesa Point, right. but we're going to go fully electronic, aren't we? And we're going to take cash out of the system. Yes. And that's where our business is also focused on. You know, I think the the bulk of the market deals with cash today, but we really are trying to move on to electronic only type tra transactions which will dramatically lower the cost and speaking of electronic transactions johnny moangi wonders are there ways to you're planning to integrate or work with online payment gateways for online transactions say something like a local paypal yes yeah I, we have uh, we have a couple of initiatives underway nothing launched yet yes um i i would think it would be fair to say that at this point in time our our focus has been more on, on the wide footprint and the mass market than it has been on, on some of those niche areas. Um, but but we're, we're, we're working hard on those as well now to provide some services on the online space. Is there potential even in that space? I think there is, you know, and I think the two work together. Um, I think online at the moment is slightly niche, yes. but I think the more uh, we enable the, 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 the broad masses of people to actually pay electronically, of course, the more volume we'll see online. And I think that, you know, then it becomes a, a a different game. All right. Uh, apparently, you you run one of uh, East Africa's busiest payment switch. Yeah, I mean, uh, what is, yes. well, well, our, our switch in the middle really is linking in all sorts of uh, players. So yes. we have, I think, thirty-two financial institutions connected. We have uh, card associations like Visa, Mastercard, China Union Pay, and, and a whole lot of others. Yes, uh, we operate in in four different countries. So we've got banks and institutions from there coming in. We have uh, mobile money uh, connected into that switch. So in Pesa, in two countries, uh, and Airtel money. Uh, and then we have uh, billers, you know, people like bill payment companies, so uh, the likes of DSTV, Nairobi Water, that sort of thing. So um, it's, a, it's a busy conglomeration. We, we like to think of ourselves as the water hole right. and everybody else is around it. And it's very much our job to connect together uh, pieces of that infrastructure uh, and, and, and make sense of it, yeah. And we're talking about financial inclusion and just uh, affordable financial services mm. to the lower end of the population. Yeah. It has been a big success in a sense with MPESA trying to give people who would otherwise be unbanked yeah. a, a way to send and receive money and to keep some of it. But there's more that needs to be done. Yeah, there is. Um, we've been working a lot in the uh, large employer sector. So large employers who um, are typically paying seasonal workers in cash. And, and those workers, you know, have to then leave with that cash and find something to do with it. It's yes. risky for them. It's risky for the employers. And, and, it's, and it's a big overhead in terms of cost. Yes. And, and what we've done is worked out solutions where the employer actually offers the employee as sort of free banking services where they have, just like in PESA, a stored value account. The employer credits that account. Right. And the employee is given a card and is allowed to go to any ATM on, on our infrastructure and withdraw their, their, their income. What this does is it really says that um, you've got all the transactional services of a bank account, but the employers are passing these on without cost to their employees. So yes. it's a nice uh, solution for everybody. Um, 
in terms of the, the, the safety of it all, the, the money sits in a bank, it's with a bank, a bank is involved in the solution. All right. And the employer is the one that engages the employee. So if there's any dispute about, I didn't get my money, it's not trying to phone a call center somewhere. It's all going right. back to the HR department and saying, I didn't get my money and they can look it up immediately and sort it out. Mm -hmm. And we have tens of thousands of workers now with these cards in their hands, benefiting from in financial inclusion. And the importance of having them included in financial services is what? Well, you know, I think that, again, coming back to it, cash in their hands, you know, what does that do? Firstly, it moves outside the formal economy, which yes. isn't good for us at all. But secondly, it, from the actual in individual's point of view, it's risky. You imagine, we've heard all sorts of stories of, of women, you know, who earn, earn an income, go back, and somebody takes it off them, or they lose it on the way back. And, and they don't like that. No one likes to carry their total income for a week in their pocket. Yes. Um, so, so, you know, we're giving them the, the safety of storage. And what is interesting to see in these solutions is, is um, you think that it may take some time for people to build up trust in them. You expect right. that maybe after a few months, a little bit will be left. People are saving almost immediately, showing that the, these services are desperately needed. All right. Are there some of these things that have been done in other parts of the world that we can learn from or in, in a way are we pioneers? In no, there's sense? always things you can learn from. But, yes. you know, we have a special set of circumstances here. Yes. And, and I would say that at this point in time, there's more people coming to Kenya to look and see what's going on than, there's, than Kenyans going elsewhere to check it out. So right. we still have to learn all the time, you know. Um, but I think in this case, it's, it's what's fascinating is learning from the market. The market's speaking loudly at the moment. And I think the innovators out there are, are reacting to that. All right. I'd like to pick up on something you mentioned earlier about the ability of somebody who's holding a debit or a credit card, whatever, you can be able to walk into pr practically any ATM and be able to get your money. You won't worry about the costs and charges. Mm -hmm. How far do you think we are away from that? Well, if you take that there's um, something like 2,200 ATMs in Kenya today. Right. Uh, this time last year, PESA point was 110 ATMs. Now, as I say, we're over 650, and we have some big um, steps to take in the next few months. So I think, you know, at that rate, you know, you could, you could comfortably say it's another couple of years. Yes. I think it'll be faster. I think we're talking about 18 months before we see a properly integrated uh, infrastructure here. Because ideally, every bank that needs to put up an ATM is a cost to them, which yeah. would be much better if it is shared so you have access to everybody else's Absolutely. And, and you know, the other thing we're seeing is they used to differentiate banks between the, their own ATM and, and another an off-site ATM. Yes. And we're starting to see banks innovate now and offer the same low price over any ATM. And, and I think that's also fundamental and, and very innovative. What are the future for uh, payment innovations? Where are we heading? Well, I think, we, as I say, we, we're probably going to move away from cash over time. Yes. Um, and that really comes down to having the acceptance points. You know, do we, do we have the points right now where we can walk into a small duca, take your phone or card and pay for something electronically? No, we don't. Yes. And, and so that infrastructure, I think, is the next wave. I think that's what we're going to see in the next couple of years in Kenya, is that the, the smaller retailer is going to have an electronic capability to receive payments, whether that's on the phone or whether that's um, off card or any other device. All right. You mentioned you, you're, you're not just in Kenya because you do business across the region. How do we rate in terms of uh, innovations, in terms of ease of even doing business ag against our counterparts? Yeah, you know, I, I Kenya is a, a fantastic place to do business. And I think the regulatory, the framework environment here to, to innovate is definitely in place. And, and you know, it's, it's like everything where you get one big innovation, you get lots of small ones happening, and it's great to see the industriousness. Right. I think the, the rest of the region, to a certain extent, is slightly behind. Um, but, but, but have unique sets of circumstances, you know, and I, and I think it, it, places like Rwanda, we're seeing some, some quite quick turnarounds in terms of how people react and the types of services they're adopting. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, we, we are very neutral as we go around the region. Everybody watches everyone else. So, yes. you know, the last thing you want to do is walk into Uganda and say, have you seen how clever Kenya is? Because they don't, they don't take that too well. Of course <laughs> not. All right, we'll leave it there. Bernard Matthewman, the CEO of Painted Group, thank you for coming in. Pleasure. Always a pleasure.